Hello, 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 everyone. Good evening to you. I'm going to wait a few minutes to see if we can get some more folks to join in. Tonight, I'm going to talk with you about airbrushing your competencies. And no, I'm not talking about painting, but it kind of sort of correlates with the different techniques that are used in airbrushing, okay? So if you're a painter or if you ever painted before or airbrushed before, um, this is gonna help you out with your competencies in both your nursing um, theory and your manual skills, okay? Um, if you could, y'all know I'm already gonna ask, okay, uh, for you all to, as you're joining in, Type in your authorized administrator, okay, either Credentia, Pearson View, Prometric, Headmaster, or the American Red Cross, and what state that you're going to be testing in, okay? This is going to be an awesome, awesome live stream. So hopefully we can get some more folks to join in, okay? Just going to... Uh, Give it a couple of more minutes, well, not a couple of more minutes, but maybe like 30 seconds to another minute to see if we can get some more folks to join in um, so they can uh, reap the benefits of this live stream. I hope all of y'all are doing well tonight. I hope each and every one of you had an awesome day. I had an awesome day. Busy, but awesome. Um, so let's just wait and see if we can get more fo folks to join in here. Y'all don't be shy. Okay. Type in, type in your, uh, authorized administrator who you test under if you know, and hopefully you do know. Okay, hopefully you do know. All right. Hi, Anna. Yes. You are 100% correct. You would have to um, participate in another nurse aid training program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there are some states that um, that where you can challenge uh, the board, but I don't believe Texas is one of them. Okay, so you would have to retake a nurse aid training program. You definitely will. Good question. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get started, okay? Because I don't want to keep everyone that is here waiting, okay? Um, so we're going to talk about airbrushing, okay? Airbrushing um, your competencies in both your nursing theory and your manual skills, okay? And what am I talking about, right? Airbrushing. Well, airbrushing, you know, the paint where you use that little tool and you airbrush, right? Originated in the car painting industries, right? Because they wanted to get those cars looking pretty good, right? Particularly with an even and bright color. Right. OK. Um, what I want you all to think about tonight is. Is with airbrushing is how you can correlate that with your competencies. OK. And both your nursing theory and your manual skills. OK. Um, and just think the more you airbrush your competencies, the more you'll afford yourself the possibility of passing 
your nurse aide certification exam, right? So we're going to talk about a 50-50 overlap. This is a technique that is used in airbrushing, right? When they're painting, that's why, you know, cars look so beautiful or, um, you know, if you get an airbrush tan, right? That airbrush tan is like kicking, right? Looking really good, right? Um, because they use a 50-50 overlap or 50-50 overlay. And basically what that allows is, it allows for like a smooth transition from one color to the next. So it's not all blotchy, right? Not all blotchy, right? Where you can tell where one color uh, stops and another color begins. It just all blends together, right? And that's how you want your transitions to be, especially during your manual skills exam. You don't want it to be all blotchy right? You want everything just to flow, right? Just to flow. And in this live stream, I'm going to tell y'all how you can do that, okay? But before I do, before I do, y'all know I got to give my uh, virtual coaching sessions some props here. I got to give it some advertisement, right? So in the chat, um, I have where you can register for a one-time free 30 minute virtual nurse aid exam prep coaching session, okay, with me, all right? And then I also have the link for the paid virtual coaching, coaching session. Now the paid session is $25 an hour through April 13th. After April 13th, uh, the registration cost is going to be $55, okay, which is well, still well under, right, what most uh, personal coaches or trainers charge, right? So it's still at a very affordable price. But if you know that you're going to need the coaching session, go ahead and schedule, you know, book however many paid sessions you want now before April 13th, before the price uh, hikes. OK, before the price hike of fifty five dollars. OK, um, and then you can also visit my website at www.nursejar.com if you'd like to read some of my blogs. I think I only got two blogs up there right now. Right. But I plan on doing uh, more written blogs. Um, and also, again, if you want to sign up for either a free 30 minute virtual session or a one hour paid session. OK. Then I also have my email, nursejar1323 at gmail.com. Uh, for anybody that may just have, you know, a question here or there, um, if you want to, you know, email me. I try to respond to my emails uh, within a 24 to 48 hour period, okay? All right, guys. So let's get into what, why we are here, okay? Airbrushing, the 50-50 overlap, right? We want to make that transition from one um, manual skill to the next, nice and smooth, okay? Um, and so it's really important, especially if you're just starting out in with your training, uh, this will help you tremendously, okay? It will help you tremendously. Um, and, or even if you've already completed your training, right, and you're trying to refresh, uh, this will help you. But the earlier you start, the better it will benefit you, okay? So when it comes to your nursing theory, okay, when it comes to your nursing theory, you as a student know the best way that you can learn, okay? Your instructor does not, all right, unless he or she asks you, right, and you tell them, okay, how you learn best, whether you learn best uh, visually, or, um, you know, you're an auditory learner, or you're a kinesthetic or tactile learner, right? You learn better with your hands. Um, what you want to do is with your nursing theory, right? Your written knowledge exam is based, the majority of those questions are based on, um, you know, real life responses to real life situations, okay? What you would do right? 
um, or you know how you would perform a real life nursing task, right? Um, you know what you are allowed to do um, as a nurse aide in your state, right? So your scope of practice, right? So your nursing theory portion of your training is extremely important. This is what we call the didactic or the lecture portion of your training, extremely important because this is when we as instructors instilling you that knowledge, right? We're giving you that basic foundation for you to carry uh, away, right? When you get employed somewhere, right? This is how you're going to be doing things, performing nursing tasks in real life, right? Because we talked to y'all, you know, about, you know, documentation and the nursing process and the health team and infection control and communication and your basic nursing skills and your personal care skills, right? And mental health and dementia, right? We talked to you all all about that, right? Critical thinking, nursing judgment, practical thinking, right? All of that is going to help you in the real world, okay? And so what you can do with that, like I said, people learn differently. People learn at different uh, rates of speed, right? Um, people use different techniques or methods that will help them to learn better. And like I said, you as a student know how you learn best, okay? And sometimes instructors, they are wanting you to change the way you learn instead of them, um, you know, modifying their teaching style, right? So sometimes you have to take things into your own hands. <clears throat> you have to motivate yourself and take the initiative uh, to take whatever your instructor gives to you and how your instructor gives it to you and transform it into a method or technique that you can learn better, right? Okay. It's easier for us as an instructor to modify our teaching style, right? Because it's just us, it's just one person. Instead of trying to have, you know, our students change their learning style, right? But what you want to do when it comes to your nursing theory is every time you learn one topic, right? You want to study that topic, right? 50-50 overlap. So you're studying. Okay, studying that topic. And then when your instructor lectures on another topic, you want to start blending those two together. Okay, because everything connects, right? Everything connects. So you start blending that second topic in with the first one. Okay, and that's going to give you a better understanding. Most instructors, we, um, we construct our lesson plans to where one module or one topic uh, leads into another topic, okay? So you start blending it in. Now the third topic you're being taught, right? You're gonna go back to that first topic and you're gonna start learning or reviewing, right? Reviewing that second topic. And now you're gonna bring that third topic. You're gonna blend that third topic in with it, okay? That way, you won't forget, okay, that anything about that very first topic that was taught to you, all right, because you're you're doing that 50-50 overlap or overlay, okay? You're, you're learning something new, you're reviewing it, and then you're learning something new. Now you're blending it in with what you learned previously and so on and so forth, okay? That will help you to retain your uh, nursing theory, okay? Does anybody have any questions? Is everybody following me? All right, okay. So nobody's asking any questions. So I, I'm hoping that y'all are all getting this, okay? So now let's talk about um, your, your manual skills because I think that is the portion of the nurse aid certification exam that is the most intimidating uh, for the majority of students and candidates, okay? Uh, when you do your 50-50 overlap, okay, with your nursing skills, you learn one nursing skill, and usually that first nursing skill that instructors teach you 
is going to be like hand hygiene um, and uh, donning and removing of PPE, right? Because we talk about infection control. So we try to blend all of that together, right? Um, you learn one skill. And just like with your nursing theory, the next skill you learn, you're going to blend it in, right? Because hand washing goes with uh, donning and removing of gloves and also donning and removing of PPE, right? Hand hygiene goes with everything. So you have to continue practicing that very first skill that you learn all the way through, you know, that 21st, 22nd, or 23rd testable skill that you learn, right? Because you don't want to forget, okay? You can't forget that very first skill because it's they're all testable, right? Okay. So you just do that 50 50 overlap and you all will be fine. Now, what I want to do is um, share with you something that I'm, I'm doing, okay? Um, and that I'm really going to start implementing next year with my students. All right. If y'all notice, like in your your nurse aide candidate handbook, um, you know, there are some skills that have like 20 something odd steps uh, for headmaster. There are skills that have like 27, 28, so some skills that have 30 something odd steps. And when you look at that, it looks so intimidating. Even as an instructor, um, when I look at some of these skills and I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to you know, train my students to, um, you know, memorize all of these steps in this one skill. And they have 22 or 23 skills, testable skills. I'm not talking about nursing tasks now, right? I'm not talking about real life. I'm talking about testable skills um, that they have to learn. Um, what you can do and what I'm doing is, um, and you'll see if y'all uh, purchase my online um, skills exam prep, which I'm going to be done with it hopefully soon, right? Um, you'll see that um, in one lesson, I've actually uh, not dissected the steps, but have actually grouped several steps together, right? So for instance, <clears throat> hand hygiene. Hand hygiene has 10 steps, right? In that lesson, I've um, condensed those 10 steps into six steps, right? So it looks less intimidating. I've grouped, um, you know, grouped the steps together to where it just makes common sense, right? Okay, so this is what you have to do, right? Uh, before you do the next step, all right? So um, that's another way that, you know, will help you to um, learn these skills. OK, it's just by, you know, grouping the steps, doing it how you learn best. OK, grouping, you know, two, three or even four steps together. OK, and then just practicing those groups of steps and then adding on to it. OK, I hope you all are following me here. All right. Another thing that you all can do um, that I highly encourage you all to do is to get yourself a little setup. Now, I, did, I showed you all in the live stream, I bought um, like a three-tier shelf, um, you know, and I got like supplies. And even if you don't have the exact supplies, you can use household items, right, uh, to substitute for certain supplies. Um, if y'all watch the, you know, live stream that I did, I think like a week, week ago or almost two weeks ago, um, I showed y'all different household items that you could use to substitute as, you know, for the actual supply. Like instead of a bedpan, use a baking pan, right? Um, a basin, you can use one of those, you know, rectangle um, storage bins that, you know, you can purchase from uh, the Dollar Tree or Family Dollar for, you know, one or two dollars, right? Use that as a wash basin, okay? Um, but different things that you can use. Um, you wanna go ahead, especially if you're just starting out in your nursing training, 
you want to go ahead and start building up your supplies that you can use at home to practice with the skills. Um, because I can tell you, and I tell my students this all the time, um, you're not going to get everything that you need, you know, during the training, right? You have to, you're not going to get enough practice, right? So you have to take what I give you, take it home with you, and you have got to motivate yourself and take the initiative to practice while you're at home, okay? So reviewing the skill steps, watching videos, and practicing, okay? Because you have to get your hands dirty. You, you have to get your hands dirty, okay? So just reciting the steps, Watching videos isn't going to do it. You actually have to use your hands when it comes to the manual skills, okay, so to get that good practice in and for you to become competent um, in the skills, all right? So, guys, I hope this helped. I got to get ready to go. I was only able to spend like 30 minutes on this live stream because I have a lot to do tonight. Um, I have some more virtual sessions I got to get to. But I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you understood about the airbrushing, especially when it comes to your nursing theory and your manual skills, okay? You learn, you learn one topic or you learn one manual skill. Um, and then that next topic, you gotta have to review that first topic and then pull in that second topic, okay, to connect with it. You're gonna get a better understanding and you'll be able to retain that information much better. Same with your skills. You learn one skill one week, you learn a second skill another week, you still got to practice this first skill. Okay, then when you learn a third skill, you still have to practice those first two skills along with that third skill that you learn. Again, you know, everybody learns differently. Teachers teach differently, okay? There are some instructors that will modify their teaching style to, um, you know, work across the board with all the different learning styles that he or she has in their class. But then there are some instructors that won't. OK, so for if you have one of those instructors, um, you just have to take what they give to you and modify it into a technique or method that works best for you to study, okay? So again, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my live stream, or not to my live stream, but to my YouTube channel, go ahead and kick that subscribe button, okay? Um, again, in the chat, I have um, the links for the free 30-minute virtual coaching session. Um, this will allow you, right, to... Um, you know, decide whether or not, you know, a paid virtual session will actually help you, will actually benefit you. Um, if you want to jump right into it, I uh, have the link for my paid virtual coaching sessions there. Um, I have my website and also my email if you have any questions, okay? Uh, remember what I told y'all in my last live stream, okay? You have to ask yourself, is your future worth it, right? Is your future worth it? Is your, your future, meaning you passing your certification exam, is it worth going out, buying your own supplies, right? Is it worth paying for a virtual coaching session, right? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? That's what you have to ask yourself. And if you say, yeah, my future is worth it, then go out, start buying your supplies, start gathering things that you have in your home to use or to substitute uh, for, you know, the actual supplies. Go on my website, register for a free 30-minute virtual session. Again, figure out if, you know, you if it, that 30-minute session helps you, if it benefited you, then yeah, you know, go ahead and sign up for a paid virtual session. Again, these virtual sessions are $25, the paid ones, okay, are $25 an hour through April 13th. 
After April 13th, uh, the registration fee goes up to $55 an hour. Again, it's still a very affordable price. It's going to be well worth your money. Um, and it's still extremely below uh, that uh, baseline that most, uh, you know, virtual coaches uh, charge you. Okay. So, Y'all keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on sending me those comments about, you know, you passing your state certification exam. It just, it thrills me. It warms my heart uh, to, you know, uh, know that so many people um, are passing their exam, especially for the first time, or maybe, you know, it's the second or your last, your final time, right? that you have to pass it before you have to retake the training program again. Um, and you know, you tell me that my videos uh, are, are, is what got you there. Uh, that makes me feel so warm and fuzzy and thrilled inside. And I just, I'm just so happy for you all. I do wanna give a shout out to Ms. Joanna, to Pretty and to Niza. These are, uh, three um, clients that, um, I'm sorry, guys, those three clients that um, have partaken in my uh, virtual uh, coaching sessions that um, passed their nurse aide certification exam. And um, I think two, Joanna, I think Joanna was um, credentia, if I'm not mistaken, Nizeth was credentia and pretty was headmaster okay so i do virtual coaching for all the three major um authorized administrators okay so if you're needing help you know you need the help go ahead and sign up for that free a uh, one-time 30-minute virtual coaching session and again like i said i know i keep repeating that over and over and over again but, um, you know, at least that way you'll get a free 30 minute session and, you know, you can determine from that session whether or not the paid sessions will be uh, beneficial to you. OK, guys, I got to go. Um, I will talk to you all later. I hope that you enjoyed this live stream. Start airbrushing. Start doing that 50 50 overlap. OK, especially if you are just starting out with your nurse aid training, okay? That's what you wanna do. Hey guys, thank you, I appreciate you. Thank you for being such loyal subscribers, okay? I really do appreciate each and every one of y'all. Y'all have a good night, ciao.